Hello, let's do a critical lightning arrow charge release stunner build. On this one, focusing on armor and dodge. Even though this build can give you extra damage and sustain if you do it as a barrier, but barrier builds are not recommended early and they are kinda harder to do. So let's default to armor and dodge. So keeping that in mind, try to keep your armor first and only then get a little bit of dodge. The most important thing to note is that lightning arrow generates energy, so if you have something like creepy smile on your La Prima, or Caprice Heart Necklace, and you combine that with Absorb Energy Attack Enhance, your damage is gonna skyrocket. However, be aware, that even if your paper damage is high, doesn't mean you're gonna start clearing maps faster. So keep your eye on non-enhanced damage, as a lot of people doing Absorb Energy build just enjoys a high single target damage, even though their non-enhanced damage is still hella low. So, but I'm leaving Absorb Energy build out of this, and let's do uh, more basic stuff. So let's get into it. Skill board should look something like this. Let's start with the Lightning Arrow. It's additional lightning damage, confidence, quick attack, split projectile, fine weakness. If you need more map clear and you don't need that much critical strike, you can pick up chain instead of fine weakness. For charge release, it's additional lightning damage, area effect, Projectile Acceleration, Slaughter. You can use Fine Weakness instead of Slaughter. And Winding Wind. Winding Wind is basically for utility. You can do Preserve Mana or Acceleration on this one. For Attack Enhance is Vital Strike with Enhance Effect, Increased Duration and Time Acceleration. Instead of using Vital Strike early, you can use Marksman, but Vital Strike is much better early into the game. For Defense Enhance, a Siphon Life with Time Acceleration and Increased Duration. For Toggle, it's Illusion Arrow with Extract Energy uh, to convert Fire Damage. Fire Damage is going to be Damage Multiplier, but if you want more defenses, you can keep it at Physical, because Earth Energy is going to give you Physical Damage decrease per stack. For Movement Abilities, it's Trick Shot and Roll with Disarm and Use Count. Shout of Justice to remove CC, together with buff activation upon crowd control. For defensive seal, you can use physical domain, elemental, chaos resistances, or seal of dodge, whatever you need the most. Veil of protection is kinda in here for projectile damage decrease. And be sure you are using uh, wind veil when you activate your veil of protection, but veil of protection I would say you can keep it for the last. And for offensive attack, Seal is uh, Seal of Condensed Elements, or Seal of Critical Chance, it's up to you, what you benefit from more. Charge Release and Lightning Arrow is triggered with Spell Activation on Attack Hit. Charms, you want to start with Castor for Elemental Damage Jump, into Acuban for Lightning Damage Amplification, and last one you can go for Level, for Projectile Damage Amplification, as Projectile is gonna work on both of your skills. For charms themselves, you want to use critical chance, critical damage, those two mods are necessary. For the third mod, it's up to you. You can pick up some damage multipliers or some defenses like HP or resistances. Whatever you need the most at the time. Relics. You can start with Acuban or Stabda. So the main difference is gonna be that Acuban, when you pick that up, you can pick up Lightning Orb. Lightning Orb gives you around 1 mil DPS when it's max level, when it's level 35. That means it adds a lot of single target damage early into the game. And if you are slow to grind or you are new to the game, I would say start with the Acuban one. Pick up damage jump as a link and cooldown recovery speed. And keep active Lightning Orb. After you get more damage, or if you are big brain and you have like 10 mil DPS when you start, you can start with Sabda. A Sabda is gonna give you on passive effect Chaos Resist, and on active one is gonna give you 50% elemental damage amplification. So it's simple math at that point. If you use Mental Simulation, you use cooldown recovery speed, unless you have some of the uh, artifacts that give you cooldown recovery. And you can use... Um, Mental Stimulation effect, or you can use Enhanced Damage Decrease. Just look what you need the most. For the third one, I always default to Spica, 
But if you use Sabda, remember that you can switch your passive effect for lightning penetration on Akban. So speaking for the passive effect, you want to pick up uh, chance to deal double maximized damage. Even if you've done benefit th from physical damage, it doesn't matter. Chance to deal double maximized damage is insane and it's 5%. For the last one is gonna be Boreal, as the last one only can be level 15, so just pick up some extra HP. Zodiac, so just remember that you always want to spend your points onto the specializations first. First spec opens up at uh, 22 spend points, second spec 45, and third spec 70. You want to start with uh, Afros, then into Explorer. Then into Gem, into Prella, you can pick up whatever resistance you need the most, into Petal, then your first pack, you want to pick up Dawn, and go into Strike Damage Jump, Overpower. When you finish the quest in Saluto, there are two green quests, you're gonna open two extra points in here, you can pick up Convert Mana. Just remember, Convert Mana is gonna decrease your HP, so you need a way to sustain your HP. But about that later. Then you want Flash, Namera, Float is optional one, and optionals you only pick when you have extra points to spend. So you want to go into Elemental Damage side and pick up everything in this side, because this is the most Elemental Damage you can get on the Zodiac node. Convection, again optional for Physical Damage taken Dampening. Then your third spec, your second spec is Hail. Again, you're gonna be able to spend 9 points in here after you finish the quests. You want to pick up Tempest, Sharpness, Strike Damage Amplification. And when you have 9 points, you want to remove Sharpness and just go straight into Elemental Observer, which is gonna be m much more damage. Sunt or Temis optional one. This is before you open up your third specialization. And you, if you're using Convert Mana, you can pick up HP on Kill, which, which is going to help you with Sustain. Deadly Poison. Maggot, again, it's optional one. If you have enough uh, stats, you can pick up these notes. If you don't have enough stats, don't pick up those. Area Damage is only going to help your Charge Release, not your Lightning Arrow. Plague. Pharma is optional one if you need more HP amplification. Hunter. Blacksmith. This is semi-optional, cause uh, Perfect Dodge is really nice. I would say pick it up. Don't wait for it. Especially if you need extra points to open up your third specialization. First spec, you want to go into Strength Damage Jump into HP Absorb Limit, basically whenever you pick HP Absorb Limit, you can remove the HP on kill on your Zodiac nodes, because this is going to be enough to sustain yourself. Then you can go Capable, you can pick up HP Amplification, or if you feel like you need uh, more damage, or more attack speed, it's attack speed amplification. And if you need more damage on your charge release, you can just remove HP Amps and just go into area damage. But remember, it only affects your charge release. Mold is the last one for some lightning penetration. And if you have a Zodiac stone that has moon, it's basically enough to, to use that stone. Itemization. Let's start with the bow. Basically, this is a critical build, so we are looking for the highest critical base possible. On the bow, it's 11. For the rolls, we are focusing on gear critical rate, this is the most important one. The second mod that you want to get early into the game is going to be lightning damage flat. But later into the game, when you get more flat from other sources, critical damage is going to be the best. So basically focus on gear critical rate the most, then critical damage, lightning damage flat, then whatever you can get, weapon damage multipliers, uh, weapon speed, or weapon damage flat. For the necklace, we are looking for critical damage implicit neck, on the neck you can get Lightning damage flat, elemental damage multis, and all other rolls are defensive ones, so it's up to you. You can pick up some HPs or some resistances that you need the most. For the for the ring, we are looking for the attack critical rate implicit ring, 
we want to get attack critical rate on it, critical damage, elemental damage, attack speed. Instead of going elemental damage multis, you can pick up projectile damage. It's gonna work for you also. After that, defensive rolls, whatever you need the most. On the quiver, we are looking for critical rate again, critical damage, elemental damage multis, attack speed, lightning flat. After that, you can get whatever you want, whatever you need the most. On the chest, always focus on dodge rate multi or armor multi, whatever you choose to pick up. Then HPs, resistances, hit rate if you need it. For the boots, the main difference is that you want to pick up movement speed in here. After that, pick up whatever you need the most. Just remember, on the dodge boots, you can do projectile damage. For example, if you're gonna pick up armor boots, you're gonna have melee damage multi, which is not gonna work for you. So keep that in mind. After that, just pick up suffixes, whatever resistances do you need, or extra hit rate. Upgrades on the skill board can look something like this. And I start with the lightning arrow. You want to awaken lightning arrow into origin for lightning pen and lightning damage. Or if you want defensive option, you can awaken to verity, which gives you lightning barrier, but it's a static barrier. So you will need to step into it in order to get a defensive bonus. For the links, you can use everything the same. As I said, instead of using split projector, you can use chain. And if you're capping your attack speed, or you're close to 5 attack speed, you can remove quick attack and add chain instead, and use chain plus split projectile, or just add more damage instead of quick attack. For charge release, you want to pick up source on the awakening side, and you want to roll as many projectile count as you can. After that, you can use mana storm or just additional lightning damage, because uh, depending on your stats, Damage amplification might not be good early into the game. Consider the area damage, strike, and projectile acceleration for mapping, basically. In this, at this stage, you might want to switch your attack enhance to marksman. Just check your DPS. But the main difference is that we are using totem activation upon using enhance skill, and we are using weakened totem. Weakened totem is basically going to increase your single target damage mo most of the time. For the Awakening on the Weakened Totem, you want to use uh, Source for the elemental damage you can increase when the Totem dies. Then for Illusion Arrow, I added Elemental Master. As Lightning Arrow generates uh, Lightning Energies, Elemental Master is gonna be nice as it gives you all energy effects on hit and extra on kill. Works really well. At this point, I highly suggest to get Veil of Protection and use... Uh, Projectile damage taken decrease. Because that's gonna be the only source basically for projectile damage taken decrease. So highly recommended. For the middle one between the charge release and lightning arrow, it's up to you. You can use find weakness, you can use even the same additional lightning damage flat, whatever you get the most, just test your DPS, because there is breakpoints. And, the, and those breakpoints depends on how much damage you have. So basically on your items, on your charms, on your zodiacs. Thanks for watching. If you have any questions, shoot them away. Either on YouTube comments or on Twitch. Before February 15 patch, I'm gonna try to play this build before the Solar Decenerate release. So I'm gonna grind a little bit on this one. So if you're interested in that, you can watch me on Twitch. If not, have a nice day and GG's. See you next time with another build.